the beauty that is Himi Gouache paints. Oh my god, I've been after these for so, so long. So I am like a kid in a sweet shop right now. So let's get opening them and um, yeah, let's give it a go. I'm a bit of a girl for packaging. And when something comes in this beautiful sort of greeny blue, looks more blue through the camera, you know, I'm a sucker for it. I really am. I love it. And it's just, it's a real sturdy box too. These are all the colours that you get. As I say, gouache isn't something I am 100% familiar with. I have sort of used it in the past, but for nothing extensive. So we're going to really put these through the test today. And we're going to do one realistic piece and maybe just have a bit of a play in my sketchbook just to get a bit of a feel of, of how they apply and generally just what they're like. Got a mixing palette. And then the jelly cups inside. I'm going to swatch these colours. Now I have seen people really struggle to open them so I'm a bit concerned about how long this is going to take so mm, bear with me while I time lapse this bit so yeah you don't get bored of watching. What I don't want you know when you open a yoghurt and it just goes all over you I really don't want that to happen so let's oh first up. carefully it's like the air's sort of Oh my god, I'm scared. <laughs> ah, it's weird. It's like it's the lids pulling it up. They do come off quite well. This one has come off fairly easy. And there is the first one. Look at that. Nice big air bubble in there. So that then just pops straight back in. Oh, oh, that one come off easy. Okay, it might not be as painstaking. Oh, it looks like chocolate. That wasn't as painstaking as I thought it was going to be. Oops. I am a little bit concerned about the size of the air bubble in here. I don't know how well that's even going to pick up, but that pretty much goes right down to here which means there's that volume of space with absolutely no paint in it. So that's made me a little bit annoyed because um, they're not cheap and I've ended up having this massive hole in the paint. So yeah. Some of them have come off really easy, like the one that I've just done. This one. <laughs> Get off. Oh, God, that is really stuck on. It's not even like, it's not even budging a tiny bit. Oh, no. Okay, so first thoughts are, there is a real incons inconsistency to how well they are filled and you know, I know they're probably machine filled so you know, there are lots of air bubble spaces which irks me a little bit because you know, you're paying a lot of money for the paints and then I've got massive pockets of air which have absolutely no paint in at all. There is only one black but there is two whites. And they always say try not to start off with too much of a huge palette because it can be a little bit daunting. So let me get my thinking cap on, go wash my hands and let's think of something to do. Just before I get into all the juicy details about how horrifically wrong the um, entire video went, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell button to get notification of future videos and my lives every Wednesday. And there's lots of videos in the library if you just want to stay a while and have a look through. I'm going to go through what I learnt using gouache in various points rather than try and talk you through the 
way that I tried to paint these particular paintings. So the first thing I wanted to discuss with you was the consistency of the paint. First of all, it is best not to work with it straight from the tube or straight from the jelly pot, as in my case, and not to work with it too wet unless you're heading for a watercolour effect. The best way I can describe the consistency is like a, a bottled moisturiser or a very sort of cheap grade acrylic. So it has to flow off your brush really cleanly um, so you then get nice clean lines. From what I understand if you get a very very slow drip from your brush that's quite a good consistency but if you struggle and you find that you get lots of texture as you're painting it generally means that the gouache is too thick. It did take me some time to get used to the consistency and the portrait that I did before all of this went horrendously wrong but I learned an awful lot and I worked straight from the cups. So everything was really thick, it wasn't blending, I wasn't getting clean lines, I was getting frustrated. So although it went very wrong, I did learn an awful lot. So it was actually a very good process for me to go through. I did find in the set that actually the pink or the cyan-y type colour was more translucent than the other colours that I used. So I found that I had to use a bit less water where possible. And you'll find that rather than adding water to your colour to make it lighter, you have to add white. So when you add white to make it lighter, you then need to add some more water to keep your consistency of your paint correct. Whereas unlike with watercolour, if you want it to be lighter, you would just add more water so the transparency was much clearer. Whereas if you're working with gouache, that will not work and you will lose the opacity of your paint. So adding white is the way to get round lightening your colours. Blending once I had got the consistency right, which is point number two, I found much easier to do on the paper once I had got my base colour down, then going over with the darker colour in the area that I wanted and then mixing the two together where I wanted it to join. I had a go at doing some blending swatches and again where I was initially doing it very thick it actually cracked and dried quite badly and I know that's something that's come up quite often when people have tried gouache straight out of the tubs is that it has dried and cracked. When it was very watery, very thin, it was even harder because it doesn't quite react in the same way watercolour does. You have much more control over where it flows, whereas with watercolour, they tend to just merge into each other very, very easily. This brings us on to point three, which is allowing your layers to dry in between building up your colours. If you found on your first layer that you needed to make the colour more deep, or in fact you wanted to do a different colour on top, if you overwork your paint, it will actually reactivate the colours underneath. And because they are water activated, you'll end up making your pictures muddy. So you need to ensure that actually in between each layers, they are as dry as possible before you go over the top with another colour. But of course, if you want to intentionally blend the two, then you need to make sure that it is still a little bit damp before you sort of crack on and add the next layer over the top. So learning all that I had doing the previous two drawings, I decided to have another go at doing something a bit more realistic. And it was actually much easier to do than I thought, although I did still come into some complications, which practice with this medium will only make it much, much easier. Um, but again, I made sure that each time I needed to do a bit of blending, that the layer underneath was still... Um, not quite dry so it just made blending a little bit easier I did end up doing the bit um, the skin bit too pink but I, I go on and alter that later on but the biggest thing I think the that I learned from this was keeping the consistency correct and once I had sort of got the the knack I sort of cracked the the perfect consistency overall it made doing the paintings much much easier and much more fun certainly less painstaking than the uh, first one that I had a go at. The actual blending of the colours on the palette itself was pretty easy to do and I think the range of colours that you are going to get from the selection in the Himmy box, I think you're going to have a pretty endless availability for you. I mean, I was able to do several different colours of skin tone 
just from the colours that I had in the box. So I definitely think that having the limited palette, which I know is normally best to start off with anyways, it doesn't overwhelm you. You know, it's portable, it's good quality. Um, yes, I was a little bit miffed about the air bubbles in the actual product itself, but you know, overall, it's something that's going to last you an extremely long time. Because of the way that you have to water it down, a little goes a very, very long way. And because of the opacity of the paint, you're not having to layer and layer and layer. So again, you're not having to put a huge amount of paint onto your palette and then onto your paper, which means in the long run, it's actually going to last you some time. So unless you're doing very large portraits, overall, I think value for money it's very very good and the fact that they give you two whites which I now understand is because you have to lighten your colors with the white and not with your water that would make it more, you know much better explanation for it and again you only get the one black but then again you know many artists will say they don't actually use black in their paintings which is true it can be very very flat so the overall the the colors that they had available I think were a perfect choice you've got your your main colours that you need in there really to be able to get most pictures done that you want to get done. You've got some really nice earthy tones even you've got some really nice bright tones in there as well. So I think the mixing possibilities are pretty endless to be fair. As I progressed through this I was finding I was wetting my brush a little bit when I just wanted to soften out the edges so almost doing a little bit of a watercolour effect. So on the white of the eye itself where I wanted to blend out the blue and the pinks I just wet the brush very very slightly and blended it out. You'll see in a moment I don't leave it that stark colour. Even on a thin brush like here when I'm doing the lashes if you get your consistency correct it actually flows really really nicely off your brush onto your paper. So hopefully you have learned from my mistakes and going forward if you ever try gouache or even the Hemi palette you know let me know let me know in the comments below or if you have any questions or if you have any techniques that I haven't talked through on this video you know please let me know please comment below but have a good afternoon evening whichever it may be guys and I shall see you in the next video. Bye!